Marcel the Shell with shoes on shocked me. I'm gonna be honest, I went into the film a little skeptical. It was getting nominated for all of these animation awards, and for a film that from the outside looking in seems to be heavily live action, I wasn't sure it deserved those nominations. But wow, Marcel blew me away. Not only is the character and film itself endlessly charming and unbelievably funny, but it's incredibly profound and inspiring. And don't just take my word for it, I think 60 Minutes' own Leslie Stahl said it best. Marcel, a one-inch tall shell, reminds us of the true value of community the transformative power of friendship. I couldn't believe that this tiny little guy, this little shell with shoes on, had so much to say about people, connection, living life, and so much to teach about navigating transitional stages of our lives without letting fear or grief control us. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On is an inspiration, and Today, I'm going to talk about why this story hits so hard and why its themes resonate with me. But before we get to the film itself, I want to talk about the incredibly unique origins of Marcel and the context of his creation. And I promise this isn't just filler. To me, all of this connects back to the themes and story of the film. The character was created by Jenny Slate and Dean Fleischer Camp and was born out of a really funny circumstance. I'll let Jenny tell that story. Dean Fleischer Camp and I were at a wedding and um, we were sharing hotel room with like four other people because we were trying to save money. And we were really squished in. I just felt tiny and all of a sudden I just started like doing this little voice, like being like, you guys are like really, really stepping on me. It's, it's just like, I like can hardly move. And then I just kept doing it all weekend. And that's how it, it began. So because of this funny circumstance, Jenny improvised this little adorable voice and her then boyfriend Dean asked if he could interview her in character to create a short for a comedy show. Dean went to a dollar store, crafted together this cute little shell with shoes on and a googly eye. They edited together all the funniest bits from the interview and they used that to film a stop motion short. My name is Marcel and Mar oh no, that's the, not the first time I've done that. And while the creation of Marcel stemmed from this incredibly fun series of happenstantial events, an additional piece of wild circumstance was responsible for thrusting Marcel into internet fame. And we screened it, and the only reason that I like put it on the internet was because my friend asked if she could send it to her mom. To date, the first Marcel the Shell with Shoes on short has 33 million views on YouTube, an incredible example of early YouTube virality. And over the next four years, Dean and Jenny made two more Marcel shorts that have also garnered millions of views each, plus a hardcover children's picture book based on the character. The pair also got married in 2012 and spent years trying to find the right partners to help produce a feature-length film about Marcel. We wanted to figure out a way to tell a story that felt true to us and didn't feel like we were selling out this character who had become very special to us. After lots of starts and stops, they were able to finally start production on the film on their terms. But the production of the film itself was also wildly unique. I've actually never heard of a film being produced like this at almost any stage of its production, and it's really cool. Because the shorts had such wild success through the improvisational nature of Marcel's interviews, they built this into their workflow. Rather than write out a full script, they wrote out a long treatment with story beats they wanted to hit. They also managed to cast Isabella Rossellini to star alongside Jenny as Marcel's grandmother Nana Connie. Yeah, I know. Incredible. Then, Jenny, Dean, and Isabella got together and captured audio as they improvised the scenes and sequences that they needed. This meant that the story and narrative morphed and changed as they worked through these recording sessions. The improv was there to actually bring it alive and that we we're actually doing something living. And I think this is 100% why it's so easy to connect to Marcel as a character. Nothing about Marcel feels fake or manufactured. When you watch Marcel on screen, you believe that this shell is alive, that he has hopes and dreams and fears and insecurities. I like that about myself and I like myself and I have a lot of other great qualities as well. That is a real character and it's one of the most magical things about this film. Sometimes people say that my head is too big for my body and then I say compared to what? After they locked in the final script through this improv, they cut together a full animatic of the film that they worked off of, first filming the live action sequences and then later the painstaking animation to implement into the already shot live action footage. Seeing the lengths that they had to go to animate and implement this animation into the film is what convinced me that I was entirely wrong when I expressed skepticism about the film's place in these animation award categories. Fleischer Camp actually
eventually had to submit a series of documents to the Academy, proving how much animation was done on the film to allow it to qualify for the award, which I think is a testament to how seamlessly the animators were able to implement the stop motion into the live action sequences. It's truly an amazing feat of animation, and I cannot sing its praises enough. And it makes this entire film all that much more miraculous. To be able to make something that requires such an incredible degree of precision as stop motion animation out of a script that was literally being formed in the least precise way possible, a living story that was improvised and altered over the course of its life, there is nothing else like this. And it's, again, why it's so easy to believe that Marcel is a living, breathing thing, even though he's made from this exacting animation technology. Now, with all of that table setting out of the way, and yes, like I said, I will return to the production later, let's talk about the story of the film. Now, this is where I'm gonna dive into heavy spoiler territory. If you haven't seen this film, I want to implore you to stop the video, watch the film, and then come back. It is so worth experiencing before it's all spoiled for you, and I think you'll enjoy the video a lot more if you've seen it first. I promise you won't regret it. Okay. Here we go. The film is basically framed around two majorly important things that we learn about over the course of the opening of the story. One, the character Dean, played by director Dean Fleischer Camp, has temporarily moved into this Airbnb after his divorce and discovers Marcel and his grandma Connie, two little shells that live at this house. He decides to interview Marcel to make a little documentary about him. Two, Marcel and his grandmother are the only two remaining shells of a much larger community that was tragically taken away from the house in an incident involving the former occupants. And that community included Marcel's immediate family. And we learn that shells generally don't survive outside of a larger community. It takes at least 20 shells to have a community that's about minimum you need to survive. And the importance of community is one of the major themes of this film. Marcel and Nana Connie had to adjust everything about their day-to-day -day life without the support of their community. Marcel uses a tennis ball to get around the house. Connie has taken up farming to provide food. Marcel puts honey on his feet to be able to walk up walls. He has a zip line system to get across the yard faster. They have completely altered their entire lives to be able to make it on their own. Every single thing is a struggle, but they continue to live their lives and try to survive. And not just survive, but have a good life. So after previously having this massive community, now all Marcel has left is Nana Connie. And as you see over the course of the film, the trauma from losing his family and fear of losing what remains deeply affects how Marcel lives and the decisions that he makes. But the introduction of Dean into Marcel's life changes things substantially. Marcel opens up to Dean and lets him document his life, and mirroring the real-life success of the Marcel short, the video about Marcel blows up on YouTube, catapulting Marcel to viral fame. He's being talked about in YouTube videos and on talk shows, and there are even memes being made about him. When the kush hit, kush? What is kush? <laughs> And this newfound fame actually completely shifts Marcel's worldview. His entire understanding of how big the world is changes, and it gives him hope. There must be so many others like me. It's impossible that there wouldn't be, and not just my family. And this inspires Marcel, realizing that maybe it's worth taking a leap of faith and using his new platform to try and find his family. But this also introduces the negative side of internet fame. Some people aren't interested in helping. Some people find Marcel's house and just film themselves in front of it for internet clout. It's still a group of people, but it's an audience. It's not, it's not a community. Again, tying back to one of the film's most important themes. And this viral fame also brings incredibly unfortunate side effects. While Dean and Marcel are out of the house for a day in the search for his family, the internet clout chasers break into Marcel's house and Nana Connie ends up getting severely hurt. And so in Marcel's eyes, taking this leap of faith to try and secure a better life for himself and his grandmother caused something terrible to happen to the only person he had left. After the trauma of losing his entire family, he nearly nearly loses the one remaining piece of his community. And this causes him to entirely shut down. He locks up the house, covers the windows, has Dean take the videos off of the internet. He becomes a hermit. He stops pursuing a better life out of fear that he will lose what he has left. And this idea is the other key theme to this film. 
I actually want to bring this back to Marcel's creators, Jenny and Dean, for a moment. I don't want to pry or assume too much about their personal business, but another major aspect of this production is that when they started working on the film, Jenny and Dean actually got divorced. And despite this, they decided to push through and work on Marcel as creative partners. And whether or not it was intentional when they set out to tell the story, it's very clear that these themes and ideas are a result of the two of them working through their own grief, working through this difficult transitional stage in their lives. We were working through our own feelings of loss and um, how to repurpose loss so that it doesn't become um, a fossil that just gets forgotten forever but has like a, a spirit like yelling from the deep. And I think this is another aspect of this film that helps it resonate so strongly. The crafting of this film's story and script was constantly evolving, and therefore these themes weren't artificially planted into the plot. They were naturally and genuinely woven into the characters on a fundamental level. And what I love about this is that the literal creation of the film itself is a beautiful example of the theming and messaging that it's conveying. I can experience like grief and loss while also trying to live a, a life that feels satisfying on a daily basis mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, that is like one of the things that's built into the film. This is also baked directly into Dean's character who is literally staying at the Airbnb because of his divorce. I am playing a version of myself that doesn't exist anymore and I'm glad I'm not that person anymore. And his journey over the course of this film is nearly as important as Marcel's. Like Marcel, Dean has lost his own support system and I think it's made clear that his initial interest in documenting Marcel is more of a distraction. I mean, I don't want my voice Senate. Well, that's up to you. So stop asking me questions. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. At first, Dean just wants to be an observer. He wants to film Marcel, but he doesn't want to insert himself into the narrative. And I think this is also born out of a fear of forming a new connection, which is understandable while dealing with the grief of losing someone so important. He knows he's not going to be staying at the Airbnb forever, and he deflects the idea of forming a more meaningful connection with Marcel. Why did you have to move out? Uh, that's personal. Okay. But what's so great about Marcel and Dean finding each other is that they were both in need of a community, of a support system, and they were both there for each other as they navigated this difficult period of their lives. They needed each other. But it takes Marcel persistently trying to get Dean to open up for Dean to realize it, even when Dean is trying really hard to remain an impartial observer. You know, Dean, have you ever thought that your life might be a bit less lonely and a bit more integrated if you took the time to connect with somebody and not just make videos about them? And he becomes more and more integrated into Marcel's life as the story goes on. In particular, he really tries to intervene when the interview opportunity arises. One of the funniest quirks in the film is that Marcel and Nan both love Leslie Stahl in 60 Minutes, and because of his internet virality, Marcel is actually asked to do an interview with Leslie for 60 Minutes. And for Marcel, this is truly one of the most exciting opportunities imaginable. But because of the trauma of losing his family and the fear that letting people in will put Nan in further danger, Marcel initially refuses to do the interview. And Nan is the conduit through which the most important lesson in the film is taught. First to Dean. That life's not gonna go on unless you don't open up, right? Do you know that, Dean? And then to Marcel. Just before the interview, Marcel wants to cancel due to Nan's waning health. Let's forget about being afraid. Don't use me as an excuse not to live. Because if we let the fear of change or loss dictate where we invest our happiness, we're preventing ourselves from feeling the breadth of emotion and experience that life has to offer. What if everything changes again? Marcello. It will. Life will always change. It's in its nature. Connie reads Dean a poem by Philip Larkin about the changing seasons that illustrates this idea beautifully. Last year is dead. They seem to say, oh my God. begin afresh. Wait for me, wait for me. Afresh, afresh. I really wish I could play the entire poem. It's one of the most poignant parts of the film and it sends Nan off into the sunset a tragic event portrayed beautifully. After Nan's death, Dean is truly and genuinely there for Marcel. He's dropped the idea that he'll simply observe and he embraces their friendship, remaining in support of his friend. There's this hilarious scene where Dean tries to sing I Wanna Linger with Marcel, but can't hit any of the notes properly. And it seems to genuinely cheer Marcel up. I wanna linger. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
really don't know what to do with you. And when Marcel shows concern that Dean might be ready to leave the Airbnb, he reaffirms to Marcel that he's sticking with his friend. Where am I gonna go? I don't know. You're it, baby. It's just a really beautiful illustration of how Dean has opened himself up to Marcel. But I think most importantly, the leaps of faith that Marcel took in this film, in spite of his fears, ultimately paid off. The team at 60 Minutes manages to find the former occupants of the house, and they track down Marcel's entire family. What followed was something we rarely see a family reuniting. But Marcel also gained a new member of his family. One of my favorite moments really showcases that lasting connection he formed with Dean along the way. You know, you're welcome back here anytime you want. Thanks. And maybe even more meaningful is the scene that actually takes place after the credits as Marcel visits Dean at his new house. This is one of the first times in the entire movie that Dean isn't talking to Marcel through the camera. He puts it down and we see him carry Marcel around the house, showing him the new digs, illustrating perfectly that Marcel isn't his project anymore. He's just his friend. But the idea that still resonates most with me in this film is not letting our fear stop us from living and not closing ourselves off to new experiences. If Marcel had let his fear stop him from doing that interview, he still would have lost Nan and he never would have found his family. The final scene in the film reinforces this idea in such a perfect way, as Marcel feels led down to the laundry room where Nan used to spend her free time. It felt just like her to lead me to a place where I would experience something new and special. Because if I wasn't there, the sound never would exist. What I love most about this message and how it ties to the other themes of the film is that it's also reflective of how Marcel was created in the first place. Jenny felt tiny and cramped in a hotel room full of people, and that inspired her to do the Marcel voice for the very first time. And if she hadn't been there, the sound would never exist. Dean and Jenny both felt inspired to follow that fun and exciting experience and turn it into something new, creating the short. They screened the short and then only posted it online because a single person at the screening wanted to send it to her mom. And three shorts, tens of millions of views, and a children's book later, they were able to make a feature film about the character. And even when it could have been really easy to call it quits during the massive changes in their own relationship, Dean and Jenny decided to see this project through. And they they managed to tell an incredible, meaningful, and profound story that resonates with people because of their relatable, lived experiences that it was built upon. And if they hadn't been willing to live their lives to the fullest at any stage of this massive series of events, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On might not have happened at all. I am endlessly impressed that this film about a tiny shell with a googly eye could be so inspiring. That it could teach us so much about life about death, about change, about fear. And I hope its messages resonate as much with you as they do with me.